Hello, and welcome to my home music studio. I'm going to analyze the two-part invention number 14 in B-flat major by J.S. Bach to give you some insight into how to analyze your invention for your dance. This whole piece is built upon this one theme, which is kind of in two parts. There's this first part that sort of like I go up and down, and then this next part is sort of a trumpet call, and I play trumpet. So together, I go up and down and play my trumpet. All right? Then the entire piece is built upon that using different um, techniques of contrapuntal writing, such as inversion and canon and um, imitation and things of that nature. So after, at the beginning, Bach plays that, he takes that theme and inverts it. So instead of, I go up and down and play my trumpet, he turns it and goes, I go down and up and play my trombone, or something like that. So you can hear how what was up and down is now down and up, okay? Then he's changed to a different pitch level and he repeats that. I go up and down and play my trumpet. I go down and up and play my trombone. Now he plays the original theme twice in the original orientation. I go up and down. I go up and down and play my trumpet. And that's the end of the opening three measures, which we sort of call an exposition, right? In a fugue, we formally call it an exposition. In the invention, it's not formally an exposition, but that's the idea. Now, the left hand in these first three measures is playing a very trumpet or brass-like kind of an accompaniment. And that's the left hand part, which is a very jolly sort of thing. I play my trumpet. And then, um, when we, that's the whole exposition. So, so together they sound like this. Now we have a call and response section where the left hand leads, the right hand follows. The left hand plays up and down, the right hand plays down and up. And then they play together, they're down and up. And that's sort of the end of the whole opening section. There's the exposition and the call and response. Now, at measure six, he flips all that over and the left hand now plays that entire elaborate um, melody with up and down. I go up and down and play my trumpet. I go down and up and play my trombone. Whereas the right hand now plays that jolly sort of brassy accompaniment to this. So the roles have reversed. Now at measure 9 what happens is that this idea of flipping back and forth gets compressed. So each measure the roles are reversed. In measure 9 the left hand is now playing the eighth note bouncy accompaniment. And then in the next measure the right hand takes the bouncy accompaniment and the left hand plays that melody. And then they switch again for the next measure. Now what we have is a canon, a straight canon. So the left hand, starting in measure 12, plays. And that's just a sequence, we call that a sequence, of that motif played over and over. The right hand plays exactly the same thing, only two octaves higher. So sequence 
sing this theme. Now, at measure 14, they come together and play together um, in what we call parallel thirds. And so there's a very much a togetherness happening now. They've had their back and forth, but now they've come together. Okay, so then Bach says, well, let's do that canon again. That was kind of fun. We'll do it again. So the left hand plays. does what we call some free counterpoint to wrap the whole thing up. So starting at that canon. Now we have the free counterpoint to end section. And together. And we end together. So I hope that analysis helps you work your way through your invention that you choose to dance to. You can analyze each hand to separately and what each invention starts with its own theme. So you can identify that theme and then you can look for ways that that theme is manipulated throughout that invention. It will be played either straight through, right, or it could be inverted or bits of it could be broken up and played separately, like for example in this section where we have these parallel thirds. Right, the theme is missing the I play my trumpet bit, right? It's just that very first I go up and down. And in this place it's I go down and up, I go down and up, I go up and down, and so on and so forth, okay? So the theme can be split into little bits. It can be passed and forth between right hand and left hand. It could be inverted, it could be shortened. It could be augmented, meaning um, instead of, if Bach doesn't augment this theme, but if he did, instead of it being, it would be much slower. Okay, so there are all kinds of different ways that this one little theme, that each invention is made of one specific little theme, um, in many ways that this theme can be manipulated. And these pieces are so wonderful because they are intellectually very stimulating, but at the same time, they're very characterful and they're beautiful to listen to. So I hope you have fun exploring the Bach Convention, working with your virtual partner, and coming up with a really cool music visualization. Now, as I play through this piece, rather than thinking of it as just a cut and dry intellectual exercise, I also get some sort of emotional content out of it, some sort of pictures. To my mind, it's two friends kind of playing together. This one friend says, I go up and down and play my trumpet, and the other friend says, oh, well, that's kind of fun. Let me follow along with you for a while. We'll talk about this a little bit. Let me try it, right? And then we can kind of work it out together. And then we can go up and down and down and up together. Hey, that sounds like kind of fun. And then they play this kind of chasing game. And so it gives me some real information about emotion and perhaps even a little storyline that I might use in my dance. So let me play the piece once for you. And while listening to the piece, try to visualize the music. Try to get that head where you're following lines separately as they go along. But also let the music move you and let it inspire you and let it maybe give you some ideas for how you might go about choreographing this piece.